What's up everybody? Today we got something pretty cool going on. We've got a C5 Corvette strapped down the dyno that's a full-blown race car. 315 with wheels on all four corners. Taylor, open up that door. Let me see what you worked with on the inside. <laughs> he keeps looking for the door handle, but he yeah, forgets. Right check this out. I'll help you out a little bit. Look at that, y'all. Completely gutted. Yeah, but check out this cage. We've got a full-blown cage in this thing. The car is just gutted. It's got no airbags. Um, every panel that's not necessary is taken away from the car. But anyways, we're doing some dyno tuning on it today. So the customer does a lot of racing at Road Atlanta um, and a few other road course tracks in the Georgia area, I guess. So he's in a class that's very, very strict. So with that said, this isn't a crazy high horsepower car. It's an LS1 motor, from my understanding, LS1 or LS6. And it's got simple bolt-ons. It's got like the headers, it's got a mass airflow sensor deal, and a couple other very simple things. And in this class, I believe the limit is 380 horsepower. You have to show dyno sheets that your car is not above about 380 to the wheels. So Taylor's dialing it in. The car ran decent before, but it'll shut off and do little funny things. And um, he's already done a baseline pull, and the car is extremely rich. So he's got a lot of tuning to do, and we'll see how much power he pulls out and see what it does as, as far as the difference. But I'll show you what we got. Okay, Taylor just did a baseline pull without changing anything. Let's see what it did. What you got going on, Taylor? So, okay, so we just made 329 and 346 foot-pounds of torque. And the whole time, I can just see tell that this car needs a tune. Like, um, I've got the dotted line about where I want to put it as far as air-fuel ratio-wise. Well, this car, it starts off around like 11.0. And then right around 4,000 RPM, we're in the tens. At 5,000 RPM, we're literally at 10.04, basically 10.0. Um, this car has a good bit to improve from. Uh, we can get a little bit more out of this this car. So we're gonna continue tuning this bad boy and see what it see what it does. You would run like a really high horsepower force induction car in the tens, and that's kind of rare to run something that rich. So this thing's just pretty much getting saturated with fuel and it's killing power. So I think he's got a lot of tuning to do on this thing. No, I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty cool angle considering that I can like touch a camera through the windshield that's not there. Yeah, but um, okay, okay so you had a, one of these, aren't you? <laughs> How familiar with these things? What you got going on with your C5s? Man, just sit in this thing. The Whenever you sit in a C5, it's just different. Like, you sit down in it, and even like this is a race car, and you just feel at home. Just like where your hands rest, the shifter is. You just can't beat a C5 Corvette. How many have you owned? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now I'm on two, and that could change soon. But um, I, I like I like C5 Corvettes. I had a um, 2000 Corvette, got it with like 65,000 miles on it, put about 40,000 miles in that car about four years ago. Um, I just picked up another C5 Corvette. It's a 97. It's the first year they made them. Um, as far as modifying, those cars are a little bit harder to do because of the computer. Um, the computer isn't as advanced as like a 2000 model Corvette. Um, but both Corvettes were black, both of them were C5s, both of them black leather interior, both of them a six-speed manual. So I think you guys know what kind of C5s I like. I don't mind silver, would I personally get one? A race car, yeah, but you know, something to drive on the street and then turn into race car, it'll be black. How that run? 
trying to perform for you? What are you trying to do? All right, so um, all right, richening it up a little bit. These were a tad too rich. This car is responding very uh, dramatically. <laughs> Um, you know, you, uh, tuning sometimes you go up by percentage. Um, in this case, we are going up by percentage. It just went, um, I guess, severely up by an entire point by adding 3%. So I'm going to put it in the middle. So I'm going to take out some of that fueling there. And um, we're going to see if we can make max horsepower. But it's cool because a lot of times people ask us what's the difference between a street tune and a dialing tune. Well, street tune, you just fill it with your butt. You know, we're pretty good at tuning and knowing how fast the car should be, so we are usually within like five or 10 horsepower. But on the dyno, it doesn't lie. So for example, um, the pull before the one we just did, we did uh, 354. After making my adjustment, we made 345. Well, I know that I need to split the difference because I, I believe the car can make more than 354 horsepower, but I overcorrected the tune and I made 345. So by me splitting the difference, I should hopefully make anywhere between 355 through maybe even 360. So in really simple terms, what he's saying is that he made a 3% change and made 10 horsepower less. So he's gonna make a 1.5% change and hope to make more power. So let's see what he does. So the car just made 356 horsepower, 373 foot-pounds of torque. Um, that's about as much as the engine can really put out, but I've got a, a trick up my sleeve. Um, these cars, they creep up to about 230 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, sometimes it does about 235. At 240, you're supposed to just shut them off, pull over to the side of the road, let it cool down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the fan setting and the tune to make the fans turn on sooner. And that should cool down this car a little bit quicker. I'm hoping the temperatures are right around like maybe 180, 185 if we're lucky. And by those temperatures being lower, I think we can make more horsepower. Fire and hole. of fans and we did make more horsepower we ended up making 361 horsepower and 379 foot pounds of torque so this is a before and after the blue is the first run the red is the last run and um i'm about to get out of this bad boy because it is hot and uh we can go ahead and print the the sheets out and show you guys put up on the screen So we got a curveball going on. We decided, what we decided to do, Taylor? <laughs> decided to change the spark plugs, considering that we're running a 10.0 before we touch the car. We might be able to gain a little bit more horsepower. So we're at 361 right now. We're about to see what just a plug change makes and see what we can do. <laughs> So these are the O plugs. They don't look bad, but I think fresh plugs make a little bit more power. We didn't make any more horsepower. We made a little more foot pounds of torque. Um, but right around here, which he might like this a lot, right around 37.50 or so, we were at 260 horsepower. Um, now we're at 269 horsepower, so we did gain um, in the mid range as well as torque. We were at 364 foot pounds wow. of torque. 
now at 376. So um, that's pretty impressive for like a mid horsepower um, or mid range horsepower difference. So you gain 12 foot pounds of torque mid range. Yep, right around 3700 RPM. So if he's taking a turn and whatever and he's to get out of a corner, um, that mid range horsepower is gonna gonna definitely um, get him get him out of the, the corner faster. So you think that's every ounce of power this thing's got in it? Dude, this is every <laughs> ounce of power this thing's got in it. Next is like port heads and he really needs to do like a cam kit. So for a stock LS1 with the LS6 intake manifold and long tube headers, X pipe and uh, muffler delete, this is this is all it's got, man. Hey guys, let's go over nano sheets here on paper. I want to show you guys this. This is our absolute first versus last. The first run was this red run. The last was a blue. So check out the differences in power there. That's insane. At some points I hear, he's actually picking up about 50 wheel horsepower off of just a tune. That's really freaking nice. Look at the torque difference. Red ones before, blue ones after. Torque is about 50 foot pounds of torque as well throughout the whole power band. So stock, we're right around 330, 346 on smoothing four. After is 360, 383 on smoothing four. So the latter part of the video where we did the spark plug change, look at this. Technically we lost about two wheel horsepower torque on um, peak, but we gained four foot pounds of torque. But that's not really true because look down here. Before we're at 263 horsepower, after we're at 272. So we actually picked up about 10 horsepower down low. And torque as well, look at that. We picked up about 12, 13 foot pounds of torque because before we're at 364, now we're at 377. So that's nice. We lost a little bit of power here just because the car is making the same overall power. If you do 10 runs back to back, the power is going to fluctuate just a little bit. But that's really freaking nice. So Taylor. Now it's time to go work on a C10.